um, of our webinar series on artificial and uh, artificial intelligence and religion. Uh, our speaker today, as you all know, is uh, Lionello Badia. I will um, introduce our speaker uh, shortly, but before uh, doing so, uh, I would like to pass the floor to uh, Professor Marco Ventura for a brief uh, introduction and welcome. Yeah, just a quick note of uh, thanks to everyone for being here, Bori Sreme and the team for carrying this program forward. We're very happy. We're very happy to be with you. We're very grateful to the, uh, the, the, the speakers. Uh, I'm here today again with uh, some students from uh, our class at the University of Siena in the uh, master degree on cultural and public diplomacy. And so it's, uh, it's, it's good that we have uh, a, mix, uh, a mixed audience uh, in terms of backgrounds. Uh, and uh, one uh, final word of very special thanks to Lionel, uh, whom I take as a, an example of the diversity we want to pull together in these webinars. Uh, Lionel uh, started as an anthropologist. You will correct me if I'm wrong, but I will give him everything fine at the moment. Yeah, with, with, with a strong interest on Asia and the Buddhist world, you then uh, moved from there, uh, and thanks to that previous experience into eco eco economy, uh, economics of religion, and religious economics, which is a which is a fabulous area, and you wrote a seminal book uh, in that area, and now moving into the the, the magic word, the magic word of religion and, and AI, and I and I, and I uh, just take your itinerary and trajectory uh, as an example of the fa fascinating conversation that is uh, uh, being built. Um, uh, step by step into in, in our area. So thank you very much for being with us. Back to Boris Rem for a proper introduction and thank you again everybody for for uh, joining today. Thank you. Um, so yeah, uh, uh, Professor Lionel Obadia, he is a full professor of uh, anthropology at the University of Lyon uh, and he um, directs his uh, the head of the uh, Department of Social Sciences and Humanities at the French National Research Agency. Um, as uh, Professor Ventura just said, his main research interests are in the anthropology of religion, in Asian religions, uh, in connection with uh, phenomena of globalization, uh, and in magic and its intersections with um, modernity. He has published uh, 10 books uh, and uh, edited uh, more than yeah, 17 special issues of, uh, of uh, journals on uh, these topics and in these fields and has published more than 170 papers, uh, journal articles and um, book chapters. Let me just uh, mention two or three of his um, publications. Uh, one was already mentioned by Professor Ventura, La Marchandisation de Dieu. Um, Economie religieuse, uh, um, um, which was published in um, 2013. Um, testimony of, of uh, Professor Obadia's uh, uh, strong interest in, in economics of religion. Then there is um, a special issue of the uh, uh, bulletin of the, for the study of religion entitled Fleeting Sentiments of the Sacred. And let me just uh, mention one more here. Um, uh, religious diversity in Asia, a special issue of the uh, uh, journal Approaching Religion in 2017. So um, without further ado, the title of today's talk, uh, of Professor Obadia's talk, is Magic of AI, AI for Magic, Magical Thinking Practices and uh, Digital Age. Professor Obadier, Obadier, the floor is yours. We have um, 25 minutes for the presentation and then another 25 minutes for discussion. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you for invitation. Thank you for presentation. So uh, I feel uh, a bit old now when you mention all the publication that are behind me, but I, I hope uh, this conference will also be um, 
a, a good point, a good way to to uh, to tell everybody around that uh, then you can uh, still uh, stick to the issues of uh, belief, symbols, representation, and practices that were previously attached to religion and then jump into a new field. And uh, this new field, um, this is not new, uh, not entirely new for uh, everybody around, uh, but uh, this is uh, uh, kind of new for me because indeed I came from uh, uh, the, the, the study of uh, Buddhist tradition and then I shifted to uh, magic and witchcraft in Nepal at first and spirituality in South Asia. South, South India, and then uh, global magic, and it leads me uh, very easily to uh, jump into the issue of magic and the digital uh, digital environments. And on this basis, uh, a question on the on the AA, um, AI. Sorry, I'm speaking in, in French uh, in French uh, version. AI, uh, AI and and the and magic. So. I will try to um, attempt to um, um, frame or circumscribe a field of reflection relying on examples, and uh, here is the plan. Um, I will start with the contextualization of the issue regarding, for instance, first, the uh, relationships between religion, magic, and technologies, especially in the field of religion and new technology that was the first uh, ground uh, the first context in which the relationship um, came to a scholar or academic interest. And then I will uh, progressively uh, shift towards the issue of uh, magic and digital environments or digital technologies. And I will um, uh, exemplify with my own research and uh, uh, to be in the um, uh, a bit selfish uh, promotion of my own research. Uh, there is a, a paper that has been just published in the la last, uh, latest uh, issue of Social Compass, uh, in which I try to frame the uh, uh, concept of uh, digital magic, not uh, a nominal word, but uh, something a bit much more defined against empirical fields and uh, uh, conceptual reflections. And I will draw a distinction between digital magic and digitalized magic. And uh, this will lead me to the issue of uh, uh, AI or RA and magic and then um, at the attempts to circumscribe the field. And I will conclude with uh, a few points because this is an opening field and I will show you uh, why in my, in my opinion, uh, the issue are, are quite uh, um, strong and quite interesting because uh, there is a, a huge issue uh, relating to the definition of magic, of course. Uh, and the uh, relationship of magic with the religion. So do we need a, another definition of magic when it's about magic in new technology or of new technologies? And uh, this will be the, the last reflection. And uh, so welcome to everybody and thanks again for inviting me. Um, and I will start uh, by a brief non-selfish presentation of myself just to, to state from which point of view I'm talking right now. So I am used to be an anthropologist, and still I am, I guess, so I, ho I hope so. But I used to be a very classical ethnographer, meaning uh, staying in villages and communities and spending time with people, learning from them, with them, uh, uh, and, um, and um, faithful, faithful to, the, to the classical methodology of, uh, of uh, ethnography, comparative ethnography, then anthropology. I used to work on religion and magic, is, as already been said. So um, uh, the shift from the real fieldwork to a virtual region or virtual fieldwork of religion and magic came quite easily because now nowadays many communities need to uh, have a visibility online and uh, appropriate these new technologies, but not only websites, but also uh, uh, iPhone application, for instance. And um, uh, my last field work now uh, uh, on uh, the ethnography of magical supplies online, uh, the networks and the schools of magic. And um, I've been doing some field work, uh, mixed field work in between real world uh, in uh, uh, France, uh, Belgium, and opening field in uh, in Germany and Great Britain about these magical movements that are also visible and also uh, alive online, as as much as they are in the so-called real life. 
So I'm just another anthropologist interested in magic in digital times. I'm not the first one to uh, to uh, open the field. So I must confess and uh, I have to rely upon what has been done previously and I will try to uh, uh, give a, um, a short uh, landscape, short, short sketch of the landscape, uh, state of the art by other anthropologists, but not only anthropologists because um, the uh, evaluation of the uh, relevance of the concept of magic uh, relate, regarding uh, digital technologies is also a chance to uh, open up or uh, prolong a dialogue in between SSH and uh, science and technology studies as well. And so my last field work is now in uh, a lab of uh, artificial intelligence and robotics uh, that I've been uh, starting doing some field work right now, looking for the uh, expression of uh, uh, magical thinking. And this is uh, the first lab I'm working with is the French one, but I'm trying to open up to other ones uh, elsewhere in order to uh, have comparison. So the, starting with the classical uh, traditional anthropology and now I'm the uh, kind of anthropologist that is, is um, located in laboratories, not for reflection but for observation so let's get back to uh, the uh, global issue and the context i will try to uh, save time and uh, be as fast as as i can and as as clear as uh, we need to be uh, so uh, some key points about the digital revolution this would be uh, uh, quite a challenge to uh, uh, pinpoint all the elements of the so-called digital revolution, but just to mention that this uh, supposedly alleged uh, change of civilization brings about new approaches to, re to the relationship in between societies, cultures, and technology. And you can see there a list of uh, key points, a, li a list of bullet points uh, on the uh, key issue on mediatization, communication, the technologization of, of society or e-society, for instance, which is uh, um, uh, at the forefront of the agenda of the sociology uh, sociologist uh, Adam Posamai, for instance. Uh, also, the um, uh, quite um, famous virtual worlds and cyber cultures. But for an anthropologist, this is also interesting to uh, focus on the incorporation of technology in uh, bodily uh, behaviors and ordinary life. So uh, it's about now another concept. This is concept of techno culture, which uh, should deserve a more um, a more uh, academic focus that it, 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 it has received now. Uh, but there are new forms of experience, social norms, control, but also critics again the alienation of uh, uh, social and cultural worlds by, by this technology. So this is all, all the elements that we already know and uh, uh, quite, a, quite a, um, frame the, the so-called digital revolution. Um, the important and key point is that studies in religion have been the first one uh, uh, to uh, jump into this uh, digital term. I mean, uh, uh, studies in uh, uh, witchcraft, magic, uh, esotericism, uh, occultism, and so on, all the uh, classical uh, space or, or territory for magic uh, still is reluctant to jump into the digital turn or go uh, only uh, individually, individual initiative. And this is not uh, the same movement. And that's why we have to rely first on the, what has been done uh, previously on the uh, digital religious studies as uh, I.D. Campbell framed this, uh, this new um, area of uh, expertise or new area of reflection. But surprisingly or not, we will see later, uh, studies in new technologies and studies in science studies have been borrowing more and more concepts from religious studies. So there is an increasing interest in the STAs in what has been done in religious studies and on magic, but both in uh, religious studies and in uh, uh, science and technology studies, the issue of magic is marginal and it's this kind of ghostly presence. But anyway, this is kind of obsessive presence of magic under different forms. Um, the uh, uh, relying upon the, what has been done in religious studies or digital religious studies supposed to uh, understand previously how the uh, field has been framed and what kind of lines of pathway have been, have been taken. And uh, 
Well, from the uh, late 60s to the late uh, 2020, uh, 10 or 20s, uh, and uh, especially the uh, inspiring work of A.D. Campbell, but she's not the only one, but uh, she's quite uh, productive and very inspiring uh, scholars, among many others, of course. Um, we have we face two different lines of reflection. One is regarding regions when they adapt to these new technologies, but uh, these are very classical, uh, very uh, expected uh, lines or very expected topics, like for example, loyalty, belief, uh, belonging, rituals, transmission, and so and so on. All these things that are supposed to be uh, transformed or altered by um, uh, the new technologies. But also, we have another line. This is complementary to the first one, and uh, uh, this kind of uh, another way to uh, circumscribe the field is that the, the way technology impels new dynamics to religion, for instance, in uh, uh, fostering creativity, uh, hybridity um, uh, between science and faith, for instance, in the very, very uh, new kind of region or emerging religions, uh, the extension also of online religions, uh, mega churches, and so on. Uh, they are very original or genuine uh, expression of these uh, hybrid forms, uh, what Adam Posamai again called hyper real religions. This is a mix in between science fiction, new technologies, and uh, borrowing to a uh, very old reinvented traditions. So there are also the uh, classical uh, reflection regarding the fragmentation of religion uh, by new religious movement and the networking of these uh, of these uh, movements, uh, which is quite different to the issue of community of church or church in the monotheistic or theistic uh, traditional religion. And uh, last but not least. And uh, this was for me a starting point for the interest in, in online religion, online belief, and magic. Uh, this is the uh, creation of uh, so-called parody cults, or uh, fake cults, uh, online cults, and uh, the, the uh, Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, that was my, my first interest, my first ethnography uh, on, the, on this cult. So this is creative new uh, forms of, of religion. Uh, some are really uh, embedded or embodied in, in traditional form, and some are really new, uh, even metaphorical or, or critical or parodic, like, for instance, the last line. And um, the issue is that scholars in, in religious, digital religious studies are starting to think about uh, is it really new what we observe? Or this is the uh, continuity uh, of ancient log logics. Or dynamics, and uh, there are three lines or three elements or three statues, ontological statues, uh, in between the, the for the relationship of technology and religion. You can find on the first line the technology and religion classical issue, uh, much discussed here and then in different disciplinary frames. And um, uh, we all highlight in this case the complex and ambivalent relationships. So sometimes religions are quite prudent and uh, have a repulsive uh, relationship to uh, technologies, and uh, sometimes they have full appropriation. And for the uh, uh, COVID-19 uh, outbreak uh, recently, we all saw, we all witnesses uh, the, the ability of religion to jump into uh, the uh, online uh, rituals or to uh, make. Uh, 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 ceremonies in distance of virtual ceremonies and uh, without any kind of problems. But uh, 20 years ago, uh, religious uh, scholars were thinking about the problem of ethics and the problem of uh, alteration of religion by new technologies. And it was a quite a harsh discussion at the time. Uh, not to forget the technology for religion in, in the sense of sometimes uh, technology are uh, elaborated or frame or design in the service of religion, uh, for instance, to uh, uh, circulate messages and to convert people or to uh, uh, maintain people in the certain system of belief. And this uh, uh, starting point from oral to scripture and scripture to hypertext have been portrayed, by, for instance, in France by uh, uh, Régis Debré uh, was cre uh, written an interesting uh, path of, of God uh, in which he, he, he has written uh, the narrative of uh, 
uh, the parallel narrative of technologies and religi religious ideas. And of course, you have also the religious technologies, uh, these technologies that are made to believe or uh, the, the devices to make believe as uh, Nathalie Luca has uh, underscored uh, in France, right? But magic is still something very marginal in this, uh, this perspective. So um, uh, maybe it's because there is a kind of uh, uh, affinity between scientific thought and, uh, and magic uh, or a, a historical marginality in between uh, uh, due to, sorry, due to, due to uh, the uh, uh, hegemony of, of religion. Um, but some anthropologists, for instance, Alfred Gell has, has uh, uh, several times uh, recalled that uh, there are close links between uh, technologies and magic, and he even uh, underscored what he believed to be the consubstantiability uh, between magic and technology. For a French accent like mine, this is not quite easy to uh, <laughs> spell uh, this word, but uh, uh, believe me, I'm better in French. Um, so the discrete present of magic can be uh, uh, um, uh, recognized in different form. There is an important lexical extension when, for instance, papers, newspapers talk about new technology and the, the inspiring works of, of Stahl in the mid-90s uh, led us to the conclusion that um, in, in many uh, very famous newspapers, it took the example of time, for instance, uh, when uh, there are papers on, ma on technologies and uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, vocals or notions uh, borrowed from the lexicon of uh, magic, witchcraft or, or religion, but much more magic. And um, even for the designers, the engineers, on the engineer side, there's a lot of references to magic as well, but uh, in a kind of metaphorical way, but I will get back to this point after a while. Um, if we want to have the first description, the first something, something like a, a first typology of magic, there are at least three uh, regimes of existence or three uh, ontological statues of magic. First, you can find magic in a discursive way. So they talk about magic or they are a reference to magic, uh, textual or symbolic ones, aesthetic ones. And the second one, you can have a praxeological status, meaning that you see that there are some practice or techniques uh, uh, that are uh, relying upon uh, uh, magical efficiency. And the third one, but maybe there are another, other ones, but. Uh, I identify these three ones. This is the psychological form that the, when there is uh, something like a magical thinking uh, expressed through a kind of uh, relationship or interaction, for instance, with uh, uh, technis, uh, technologies, devices, or robots. Uh, of course, there are a lot of semantic extension, cyber magic, techno magic, technomancy, techno fetishism, and there are a lot of other uh, versions. But, and uh, I'm trying to uh, get uh, faster, uh, when you say magic, then you have to think about the definition of magic just to be sure that we uh, speak the same language and we uh, talk about the same thing. Uh, okay, but the problem is that the anthropological classical definition is framed after uh, the uh, trad uh, traditional uh, so-called primitive society's fieldwork. And uh, the first question that is addressed is, uh, does the classical definition of anthropology still fits to the uh, discussion in new technologies of hypermodern societies and uh, not only Western, but globalized societies? So that the environment is not the same. And so the concept must be refined and redefined. Um, and not to mention the fact that most of historians uh, uh, believe that magic is just uh, uh, an ideological system of the past and has nothing to do with the present uh, and uh, uh, least to do with the uh, future. So there are a lot of definition of magic in uh, classical anthropology, associative thinking in Fraser, uh, for Fraser, instrumental practices for Malinowski, uh, individualized uh, uh, embodiment of the magician, of the power of the magician, according to Moss, uh, the processual semantic uh, uh, and symbolic thinking for Levi-Strauss, 
the efficient efficiency of of uh, uh, unworldly uh, uh, practices for uh, Ernesto De Martino and the fully emotional and participative uh, uh, side of magic for Levi Ball. There are many many others, so I only take a few of them. But just to say that the um, a very complex uh, possibility of definition of magic uh, give us a, a tool, many tools that we can use uh, uh, all together or separately in order to uh, redefine or to complete the definition uh, of magic. Uh, science and technology on their side refer to magic most of the time in very nominal way and say, that, okay, this is something like magic or magical thinking, but not with a clear definition of, uh, of what they mean by magic. And most of the time they refer to uh, the anthropological definition. But uh, uh, I must confess that I didn't find any clear definition uh, in these works uh, regarding the, the mention of anthropology. So we get back. Uh, I, I don't have time to get back to this, but uh, this is a, a key point. Um, the uh, magic is not only a problem of definition, it's also a problem of extension of the empirical forms by which you size or you, you uh, see the, the, the magic. And the, uh, here in, on this slide, uh, this is only what we can uh, observe or we can witness or we can uh, have the senses of uh, occurrences or empirical forms in the uh, domain of imagination and aesthetics regarding machines. So there are artistic projects, very interesting artistic problem of, of Tobias Revel about the hunted machines in which he, he, he suspects machine uh, to uh, uh, be replete of magic, but uh, also magical agents. Uh, they, of course, the online games are full of references to magic and especially on, under the medieval aesthetics. Um, there are also the aesthetics of enchanted objects according to uh, uh, then engineers that uh, uh, also are, are quite uh, inclined to uh, see magic in the uh, very easy connection in between objects and the, the ability for them to uh, uh, act like they were possessed. Um, not to mention uh, the uh, old time, uh, the very ancient reflection about uh, automatons and all the technologies, the performance and technology to make believe or to create other realities in a kind of spectacular way. And uh, all the authors uh, that are mentioned in the uh, very uh, the second uh, half of the slide uh, refer to uh, these old machines before the uh, digital revolution as uh, um, already producers of magical sync. I'm going a bit fast, fa faster than. Uh, the other uh, uh, point is the um, uh, presence of uh, ritual and practical magic online and uh, the uh, pioneering works of uh, uh, Eric Davis regarding the uh, so called. Uh, technosis and the very uh, I showed the book here because this is my Bible at the moment. Uh, very interesting pioneer works on the way uh, traditional or reinvented traditional magic is spreading around uh, in digital environment and especially online. So there are a list of uh, works done actually by um, nowadays by uh, scholars from all around the world on the uh, magical chaos and technopaganism. Uh, uh, the uh, 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 which is uh, uh, using Facebook, the Wicca uh, communication strategy online and so on. So this is an in also an, an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, uh, also line and interesting aspect of the field work. And um, all these uh, show that uh, we have uh, on the one side uh, a temptation to align on the digital religious uh, studies and uh, on the other line, uh, the uh, uh, temptation to um, uh, draw our own uh, field of reflection because uh, magic is not exactly aligning on religion, especially regarding, for instance, uh, the specificities of magic. This is much more uh, 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 thinking full of doubt 
uh, which is relying on experience and uh, uh, with the aim of uh, uh, an instrumentalization of reality. Uh, there is a contract with the supernatural and uh, its kind of creative imagination. And uh, then there is an interplay in between what's, uh, what's uh, quite fixed in the traditional religion and what's more creative in magic that shows that traditionally, uh, magic cannot be only uh, circumscribed to the field of uh, religion. But there are similar lines. For instance, uh, Steph Hopper has uh, demonstrated several times that uh, um, this uh, presence of magic in technologies partake on the same re-enchantment of society. That is also the line for religion. And uh, uh, Helen, uh, classical definition in between online magic and magic online, uh, can be also uh, transposed in the in the field of magic, and this is this was my own attempt and my first attempt uh, making the distinction or drawing the distinction between what I call digitalized magic means the magic cults or magic practice using digital tools or magical uh, organization or self label magical organization, and what I call digital magic means uh, the digital magic as it emerged in the mind from relationship with machine. And this has nothing to do, again, with tradition, but has all to do with magical thinking in the classical anthropological uh, definition of the term. Uh, anyway, so we there, there is kind of wavering in between a, a close relationship with a reflection regarding religion and modernity and the digital revolution. And on the other side, something else which is uh, clearly uh, only linked to uh, issues of magic. So a lot of digital, but <laughs> a few AA uh, until now, and I <laughs> still have only five minutes, so I go very, very fast. Uh, AA, this is spectrum or spectral. I will give the, the PowerPoint for the people interested if they, if they uh, ask me off if uh, Boris and Isabella allow me to do this. But I'm um, okay. Getting back to the point of uh, artificial intelligence and the circumscription, the, dif the, the difficulties to uh, circumscribe the, the field of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, and um, uh, the uh, problem of uh, uh, the uh, many references to religion in the reflection, contemporary reflection of uh, artificial intelligence. Some say that artificial intelligence is religion. Uh, some also have uh, uh, seen of witnesses uh, or uh, recent the uh, religious reference references in the narratives of artificial intelligence, for instance, the eschatological uh, aspect of the replacement of uh, artificial of uh, human intelligence by artificial intelligence, and there is a uh, of course the uh, classical now classical uh, reference to Lewandowski's uh, religion of AA, but. We have the same uh, complexity regarding magic and artificial intelligence. For instance, a lot of references, especially in newspaper, that said, okay, artificial intelligence is not magic. Uh, or some also said, for instance, in the big uh, GAFA uh, engineers, that uh, nothing is magic in artificial intelligence, but also uh, mentioned uh, the metaphor of uh, the magic of artificial intelligence. So, when we try to first draw the discursive uh, space for AA and magic, that uh, when it's relating to artificial intelligence, magic is used as a, as a, a synonymous of a stigmata. Thus, it's, this is synonymous, for, uh, synonymous of ignorance, means that uh, when uh, there is magic, there is lack of knowledge missing world, lack of knowledge regarding artificial intelligence, but also magic as a trick, because uh, uh, all this is illusion, and uh, magic is also also the synonymous of fantasy, because these mag machines look like very pof powerful ones. And uh, all in all, uh, magic seems to uh, be a naive belief, like it was to be, uh, it was uh, supposed to be for the primitive societies. But we can also return the model on the head and see that magic is not only used as analogy, but is a kind of analogical system of thinking. And then analogy is not only a joke, this is something much more serious. And 
to uh, advance and to progress in my in my uh, reflection there is only two slides two three slides and uh, I'm, I'm i'm ending up these are the practical case studies i'm working on but i'm not the only one i tell you once again i'm following the lines of others and uh, uh, we can find magic in uh, in uh, artificial intelligence in the case of what we call witchy hubs uh, means that the uh, phone hypes in which you can have uh, a divination and uh, uh, all kind of uh, um, um, services that can that used to be provided by magicians in the time. Now there are technologies telling you what will be your future. Uh, only if you are connected, you don't need to give money anymore. You don't need to kill a goat. Uh, there is also the magic of artificial intelligence and. Uh, uh, some say that uh, this we can find magic in ordinary use means that uh, this is kind of a light definition of magic but the fact that technologies act very easily and by themselves uh, but no one knows how exactly uh, uh, can justify the uh, use of magic in this in this uh, case so there is nothing marvelous there is nothing strange this is just ordinary and down to earth magic but also, the same device, the relationship with the same device, be their uh, uh, computer screens or uh, phone apps, you can also encounter the uncanny and have a very strange feeling that there is something strange. And uh, now uh, we are entering the other side of magic. This is fantasy, marvel, and so on. Uh, but uh, there are also magic in the technological design. Uh, so getting back to Gale, uh, any technology is a magical device but uh, it will bring us very fast very far from from the discussion because it's a complex one but in return there are some kind of designers of new technology that are thinking in animist terms mean that the design is framed after uh, the schemes of animist thought so uh, magic is inspiring devices not only devices are producing magic so see that there is magic kind of everywhere. So there is a need for an ethnography of uses, users to explore the rep representation and technology and see where is magic, but also designers and developers of this technology, especially artificial intelligence uh, uh, technologies. And this is what I'm trying to do right now with uh, these new field works, but uh, it's all starting now. So uh, I hope this will be a promising uh, a promising field work. Um, so there are key concepts. I have to uh, get very, very fast on these ones because I do not have really the time to uh, uh, more time to spend. But uh, we can still find uh, the aesthetics, the uh, aspect of of magic, the uh, um, mental or psychological process uh, and logics of magic, the rituals and the instrumental uh, aspects on the backgrounds of both on one side, a kind of return of magic at the forefront of the agenda of social and psychological sciences on the one side, and uh, the return of magic in the field, field work, in the, um, in the uh, uh, social and uh, cultural uh, theater of uh, hyper-modern and globalized society. So very fast as a conclusion, the uh, what I try to uh, underscore as the promises and perils of, of this field. Uh, again, I'm not the uh, creator, not the inventor, but I'm trying to gather works that have been done previously or uh, conducted in parallel with mine. Uh, so uh, the perils is, um, so the first point is that we have to take magic seriously. And the uh, peril is that uh, magic is used uh, in a very metaphorical way, and uh, this is a fashionable issue. Uh, so uh, everything is magic in uh, artificial intelligence, and so uh, artificial intelligence is magic. So it's a bit easy, and this is not uh, faithful to the academic uh, uh, rigorous way of thinking. Um, and the second peril, in my opinion, is to remain on the very social sciences and humanities position and see the technology from out there and say, OK, this is the way it works. But I decided to see uh, from the inside uh, with the exploration of, of uh, these labs in artificial intelligence. Uh, the issues is 
there is a possibility to rethink magic, to rethink technology, and to rethink the relationships in between uh, these uh, these um, uh, these two aspects of reality. Uh, but this relationship has already been uh, already been uh, informed and discussed uh, since most. Uh, about the complementarity of technology and magic, uh, and to uh, uh, Fisher and Hoppers, for instance, that are uh, re rediscussing uh, the complex epistemology of uh, technology and magic. The promise will be a balanced contribution, or will be a balanced contribution in, in between social sciences and uh, science and technology studies. And uh, well, there will be a contribution on both sides, I hope, for scholars in digital studies and AA and for scholars in religious studies. And, uh, uh, and to conclude on this point, uh, believe me, I was very surprised <laughs> when I first came in this uh, lab of artificial intelligence. And it was even more easier. Yes, it was easier to, to, to get into this, uh, this fieldwork that uh, used to be on the Buddhist communities or shamanist communities of, of uh, Nepal uh, and, uh, and my previous fieldwork. So, this is a starting point, and I hope uh, this will be a, a, a promising reflection. Okay, okay Inken. Great. Now I'm not seeing myself again uh, anymore, but anyway. So thank you very much for that great presentation. Uh, it was a really nice summary of so many things. And I'm particularly glad that you mentioned Eric Davis because he's my Bible in the moment too. <laughs> okay. Amazing. Uh, what he did like like 20 years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. So of course, as a scholar of religion, I refuse to talk about magic and I prefer the term religion and religious. Um, but apart from that, if I put fill in religion for whatever you said when, when you mentioned um, um, magic, I couldn't agree more. You mentioned so many forms of magic like metaphorical and ritualistically and literally and but particularly thinking about eric davis and his technosis and betty marenko's digital animism yeah i'm um thinking or i'm 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 i would i'm i'm asking you isn't this what the sensors which are surrounding us, like 2.3 sensors per person in the world in the moment, and they are communicating with each other and they are yeah. more and more sentient and they are autark yeah. and they are influencing us. Isn't it time to talk about real magic? I mean, really existing, this worldly magic? Thanks. Many, many, many thanks for, for, for this question. I, I remember that uh, we, it was in Copenhagen. It was first uh, already a very, very acute question, a very clear question, and uh, uh, you get uh, straightforwardly to the point. Um, uh, my position is that I'm really open-minded to the fact that for some of, some of the, the, the people using the category of magic, um, this is just a, a, a metaphorical way of talking about things that are not clear. But the fact of being not clear is also a feature of magic, right? And the, the, for all the ones, this is clearly uh, the, um, uh, the um, process by which you uh, uh, transform the world by means of gestures, by means of ideas, uh, not referring to uh, rational causalities. So this is also magic. And uh, I leave the door open to the plasticity of magic and try to, to map the, the, all the aspects and all the discourses of magic. And when I'm finishing with all this, we begin again this discussion. Is that OK with you? Or, or, or is that a, a good? <laughs> OK, great. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Um, we have another question. Um, please excuse me if I mispronounce your name uh, by uh, Arka Prava Chattopadhyay. The floor Hello, is yours. Sir. Hello, Hello, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I had a question. Uh, in regards to religion and magic, uh, given that religion is a polysemic term, and uh, certain definitions of religion, like, for example, the one by Clifford Greets, uh, it, uh, and also uh, the term numinous that has been taken into account by Daniel Stout. Uh, so 
don't you think that there's a lot of overlap in regards to the term that you're using as magic? Isn't it a part of religion, given that uh, there are a lot of uh, animistic uh, and shamanistic traditions here in India, from where I am from, sir, there are a lot of uh, animistic uh, uh, religion, which actually magic is actually a major part of the epistemology uh, mm. of their uh, way of uh, expressing and playing it out in their daily lives. So, mm. sir, is there, uh, when you were mentioning witchy apps, and uh, other such uh, instances of sh social shaping of technology. Is there anything exclusive to the term magic, which would not apply to the broader gambit of religion, perhaps, sir? Mm. OK, this is a good question. And again, this is not an e easy question to reply. But thank you for addressing to me. Uh, in my, in my uh, conception, I think that the term magic, but I think that I, I'm not the only one to state that. Uh, I think the term magic is, is uh, as a broader uh, empirical and conceptual uh, uh, e extension that religion, which is much more related to a, a, a very um, uh, specific relationship to uh, supernatural agents, be there elsewhere, uh, transcendent ones or immanent ones, uh, depending on the cosmic uh, environment or, or, or transcendental regions. Um, anyway, um, the 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 possibility with the term of magic is the possibility uh, uh, to um, uh, operate a shift in between traditional definition of magic clearly embedded in the religious studies uh, form, I mean under the form of cultic uh, uh, practices, uh, belief, uh, tradition, transmissible tradition and so on, to something much more non-traditional but with the properties of magical thinking. And then I'm, I think I'm closest to the, to the um, uh, um, um, position of uh, uh, Lévi-Strauss, who believed that, uh, okay, the mechanism or the logics of thinking are more important than the forms, social forms of ritual, for instance. So this is much more in, in the mind that in the social conduct or on behavior patterns, and uh, uh, religion indeed uh, uh, could be applied to some of the aspects I've mentioned, but um, I'm not sure they are uh, relevant or heuristic enough to describe what's all about. And the the the, um, the attempt will be to um, um, try to um, uh, stay faithful to a definition of magic, which is not something very uh, too too much diffuse or. Too, too far from the previous definitions, but leave uh, room enough to include non-religious things into the field of magic. I don't know exactly if it was the, the reply uh, that you expected, but this is one I can do now. Uh, well, uh, sir, I definitely have a greater insight into this now. That Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we now have a question from uh, Lucia Galvani. Lucia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you so much for this uh, interesting and and very intriguing also presentation. And let us understand we cannot uh, uh, solve everything on conceptuality and uh, rationality for some aspects. Listening to your talk, I was... Uh, um, I was rem I remembered uh, a, a talk we had with a sociologist of religion, Gustavo Morello, who uh, explained that during um, a research he was performing about religiosity in, in people in new in different contexts of South America, the 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 term or or the or mentioning uh, magic was uh, generally a way to see if there were um, like to say relationships uh, to uh, to the religion the religious need i mean it could be a reference to something that can be also a religious attitude a religious mm -hmm. feeling but they don't overlap at all mm -hmm. so yeah. I, I i wonder about these specific aspects so could we consider that when 
the, the, the magic is mentioned, um, there could be a, a relationship or a reference, we, we can say, uh, to, uh, to the religious uh, attitude or to a religious feeling. It can be um, like to say, uh, is there any possible connection uh, that remains at stake? That's the mm -hmm, case. Mm -hmm. and I think Okay, thanks for this question. Um, this is an interesting one because uh, my attempt was to uh, delineate the, uh, the, the, the scope and the, and the space for magic in contrast with religion. But, but of course, there are uh, still links with religion and you can identify some kind of religious-like attitudes uh, in these uh, magical aspects that I, I've mentioned or, or other scholars have, have, have pinpointed. Um, but um, I guess that if, if we need to redefine magic, then we need to redefine religion as well in this context, because for instance, when it's about the artificial intelligence and religion, uh, you know, the, the, the critics coming from a newspaper or very critical scholars is that um, it, uh, artificial intelligence uh, um, refer to the uh, very salient aspect of religion, means domination, alienation, uh, uh, faithful belief to to uh, to uh, a kind of metaphorical god and so on. So we have very distinctive feature of religion in contrast with those those of magic, and the field of magic is much much more um, impressive, much more uh, um, blurring. And uh, it, ha it has always been conceptually and empirically, and that makes the, the interest, in my opinion, uh, of, uh, of talking about magic. And of course, we can uh, still uh, identify some kind of uh, religious aspect or, or, or religious-like aspect uh, in this field. But um, also, um, there are clearly separated attitudes and uh, and. Uh, and uh, and um, schemes of thinking. I don't. I don't mean belief, because for instance, you 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 uh, uh, see that I, I do not mention neither faith nor belief in the case of magic. I, I'm talking about thought or thinking, and this is not exactly yeah the the the, the same aspect. Uh, Okay, how much time do we still have, Boris? Thank you. We still have about six, uh, six or seven minutes. So um, there is another question by uh, Pablo Sabio Gallego. Uh, the floor is yours. Just switch on your microphone, please. Hello? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Thank you very much. Yes. I wanted to tell you that I wanted to ask you that because you are speaking about magic, so like about something that exists, or I mean, I think that should we speak about magic? So like something that really exists has like a like an empirical existence, like we like when we speak about atoms, because I would I would really think I I would really think that. Magic is a, a word. It's only a idea. It's a social construction. And if we try to to study magic, maybe we are just not studying something that is there, but we are we are like constituting something, like giving existence to something, like it like if it was something that really empirical exists when it's only a, a category that we use and that also doesn't mean the same for everyone and for and in every country and culture. And and in that way, we, were, we, we, we would not study something, we would like create it. And also when we speak about magic and religion, it's really like maybe we are just playing with words, I don't know. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. I, I think I think that we fully agree on this fact. I, I didn't say the contrary. I, I, I didn't say that magic is there. I said that there are a lot of things that we can uh, see, that we can uh, study, uh, that are labeled as magic. Discourses, 
images, practices, devices, and so on. So my interest as, as an anthropologist is not to say that if magic exists or not, is that if social actors consider that there is something like magic because they say that there's something like magic, it is enough for me as an ethnographer to consider that th this is interesting for social sciences and humanities. Thank you very much. It's Welcome. just, I thought we were also trying to define magic and what magic is with the, with the definitions of more thinkers, but well, yeah. I mean, because if we study what what some thinkers think about magic, are we then study, are, are we then studying a culture or are we just studying the theories of some thinkers that, because I'm always not sure if ethnography studies the ideas of philosophers. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, just to, 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 to be very fast, ethnography studies what social actors do and the issue of cultures is just the context in which they do this. So I started with communities in uh, South India and uh, north of Nepal, and now I'm uh, working in uh, in a laboratory of artificial intelligence in France. So the context will be in the study, but uh, first they are people and they are acting and they are living and they are telling things that are, seems to be interesting for them. And for me, this is the, 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 uh, main, the uh, main and crucial starting point for ethnography. And on this basis, after we can uh, frame uh, the, the, the models and discuss the epistemology and the definition of magic. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we are almost running out of time. Um, I'm sorry, I've been a uh, bit no, long. No, that, is, that was great. Uh, I mean, it, um, it was good to have you finish your presentation because otherwise that would have been uh, a bit difficult to discuss. So, so everything's uh, great. Um, I'm very curious um, uh, and looking forward to, to um, learning about the results of your studies in uh, AI labs and your your interactions with with AI researchers. Um, so that I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm probably I'm probably not speaking just for myself here. Um, so thank you very much for this great uh, presentation. Thank you uh, for everyone who followed the webinar and participated in the in the discussion.